Okay, uh, let's talk about the CX, uh, Compute Express Link, uh, the next generation interconnect overview and the status of Linux. Uh, please let me, uh, me self, uh, myself. Uh, my name is Yasunori Goto. I have worked for Linux and related OSS since uh, 2002. I developed for uh, memory hotplug feature of Linux kernel, and uh, I worked for technical support for troubles of Linux kernel, and etc. And currently, I am a leader of Fujitsu Linux kernel development teams. For some years, I have mainly worked for persistent memory, and I presented some press about uh, persistent memory, like here. And um, currently, uh, my team has been working on CXL since April uh, 2023. Please note the following. Uh, please refer the CXL specification for proper understanding. Anyone can download the CXL specification from official site. What you need is only registering your name and email address to the site. Though I try to make sure there is no mistakes in my presentation, there might be misunderstandings or inaccuracies yet. The CXL specification and the related specification are very huge, and I could read only some parts of them. CXL 3.1 is 1,166 pages, and related specification is very huge. So if you can find mistakes, please let me know. And I recommend it for you to study PCI or PCI Express and ACPA specification beforehand. The CXL specification is too difficult if you don't know them. Anyway, I hope my presentation helps you uh, to understand CXL. Here is the today's contents. At first, I'd like to talk about overview of CXL specification until 2.0, and additional specification of CXL 3.0 and 3.1. And finally, I'd like to talk about the status of the current Linux for CXL, memory tiering and memory hot plug or memory pool. Okay, let's start about overview of CXL until 2.0. What is Computer Express Link? It's a new specification of interconnect which connects devices like PCI Express. CXL is abbreviation of Computer Express Link. Official white paper says an open industrial st industry standard interconnect offering high bandwidth, low latency co connectivity. It's suitable to connect a smart device like GPGPU, SmartNIC, FPGA, uh, computer storage, and so on. In addition, it's also useful to expand memory, volatile memory, and persistent memory. The newest revision of the specification is 3.1, which was released last month 14th. CXL seems to be winner against other competing specifications. The board of directors of CXL includes numerous vendors and service providers, Alibaba, AMD, ARM, Cisco, and blah, 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 blah and Meta, and Intel, and Microsoft, and so on. Other competing specifications seem not to be promising. OpenCopy and GenG were assimilated into CXL. And CCIX, CCIX is not active. There is no new information after 2019 in CCIX press release. Since the promoter companies of CCIX are also members of CXL, so they can select CXL instead of CCIX. So why CXL become necessary? The first reason is increasing demand for fast processing of data. It's influencing of current technology trends such as machine learning. The second reason is the need to offload processing due to reaching limitation of CPU performance enhancement. GPGPU, FPGA, or SmartNIC must handle the processing instead. And finally, a memory capacity must be increased. Though the number of CPU core increases, memory capacity does not follow it. Since DDR is a parallel interface, it's difficult to increase the number of CPU pins to connect more memory. 
So uh, new interconnect becomes necessary to connect devices and memories instead of PCI Express or DDR. So what is the advantage of CXL? Here is an example of calculation of GPGPU will be more effective. So far, a CPU and device must transfer data and instruction in bulk between DDR, DRAM, and GPGPU memory. Not only data, but also instructions for GPGPU must be transferred. It's a bit troublesome and need time for the transfer. CXL allows that CPU and GPGPU can access other size memory interactively. It will be effective for machine learning or any other modern analysis. Similar benefits can be obtained when you offload data processing to FPGA or SmartNIC. To access each other's memory effectively, not only CPU, but also device, devices require the use of cache to access memory from the other side interactively. Currently, PCI Express does not allow the use of cache for transfer data. Even if device memory is mapped to the host address space, CPU must use write-through access, which is slow. Device need to transfer their data in bulk by DMA, which is not possible to interactively load and write memory. So there are requirements against uh, the above limitation. CPUs and devices want to have interactive access using cache. They want to write back their cache when it's necessary. So CXL is created for the above requirements. So CXL web page also says the following. Uh, Computer Express Link is industrial support cache coherent interconnect for mem processors, memory expansion, and accelerators. But what is coherent, cache coherent here? So far, only CPUs must negotiate cache information for memory access each other. There are some famous protocols for cache coherency. For example, MESI and MOESI. MESI's M means modified and E is exclusive and shared and invalid. To uh, e access each other between CPUs and devices with cache, the devices also need to coordinate cache information with CPUs. CXL realizes uh, it with messy protocol. Here is the characteristics of CXL. CXL utilizes uh, CPI Express spec uh, specification generation 5.0 or later. Its physical layer is the same with PCI Express, but upper layer becomes CXL original protocol. PCI Express generation 5.0 or later allows different protocols and uh, packet on its bus. CXL protocol is a mixture of the following three types of protocols. CXL-IO is used for uh, CXL device detection error report by PCI Express way. CXL cache is used to request or communicate cache information between devices and accelerators and CPUs. And CPU MEM used to request for memory access between devices, accelerators, and CPUs. CXL-IO is the same protocol with PCI Express, but other Others are new protocol of CXL. There are three definitions of device type of CXL. Type 1 device is it has cache and does not have memory, or its inside memory is not shown to host. For example, Smartonic or FPGA, which has the above structure. It uses protocol of CXL IO and CXL cache. Type 2 device is which shows uh, cache and memory to host. It's good example is GPGPU or FPGA, which shows device internal memory to host. This type de device uses all of the protocol, CXLIO, CXL cache, and CXLMEM. 
And type 3 device is memory expansion which connects to GXL. It's for volatile memory and or persistent memory. It uses GXL I.O. and GXL MEM. GXL type 2 device manages their cache status by a device coherence engine, DCOH. It's a component of in the device and it must maintain status of cache of the device and memory access. Device memory, which is included in the device and it's shown to host, is called host managed device memory. How to access from a type 2 device to the HDMI is here. A CXL device needs to select the following status to access its memory, which is shown to host CPU. The first one is host bias state. Device needs to request CPUs to keep cache coherency before accessing device attached memory. Like the, this green arrow, it must send a request to host CPU once, then it can access device attached memory. Next one is the de device bias state. Device can access device attached memory without consulting the host coherence engines. After bias flip, this uh, green arrow, device can access ID latency at bandwidth. Shixel 3.0 specification audit another way. I'll talk it later. I need to about talk about the features of type 3 memory device. The following configuration is available. You can configure device as memory pool as the follows. Use one memory, device, one memory device to one memory region and bind multiple device to single memory region and divide one device to multiple regions. In addition, interleave is available. This example is 8-way interleave by host bridge and uh, CXL switches. CXL has binding of port of CXL switch. So far, upstream port must be only one in a PCI Express switch. However, a CXL switch can have multiple upstream ports in it. You can bind a downstream port to upstream port dynamically. To configure binding, a component which is called as fabric manager is necessary. Fabric manager can be implemented to any style like the following. Software which is running on host machine, embedded software running on a BMC like a server management software, embedded firmware running on another CXL device, and status ma uh, state machine running within the CXL device itself. Type 3 memory device can be divided into multiple regions as a logical device and assigned to different hosts. In this figure, type 3 device, type 3 device is divided to two logical devices. Logical device 1 and logical device 2 can be bound to different upstream port. These upstream ports may be connected to different hosts. The fabric manager is responsible for di uh, dividing logical device and binding them to each port. In addition, uh, hot plug is supported. Uh, 6.2.0 zero devices will be hot pluggable like PCI Express device. It means six type 3 memory device will be hot pluggable. Not only persistent memory, but also volatile memory will be hot pluggable as a hardware specification. In past, Fujitsu made special servers which support volatile memory hot plug. Memory hot plug of Linux kernel was developed for it at first but many servers may support memory hot plug by CXL in future. Not only replacing a physical device, but you can add memory area which is hot removed from another server. It will be important future for memory pool. 
Here is a memory pool use case. Memory pool distributes a part of its regions to other servers as, many needed, as needed. Example of old use case of banking system is here. In daylight, it gives much memory to servers which access ATM transaction, and in night, it gives memory to other servers which processes batch jobs, like payroll transfer. So far, uh, this feature is only possible by a special server which supports memory hot priority. Another option is to use virtual machine on the same host, but it's not possible to pass a memory area to other hosts. CXL make it possible by establishing an open standard specification. And next use case is failover. A server can take over regions previously used by another failed server. Not only memory, but also a GPGPU may be able to take over its processing in future. OK, uh, next uh, section is CXS 3.0 and 3.5, specification updates. Here is a list of new features of CXL 3.0. It was released one year ago, uh, August 1st. The right table is quoted from the, its white paper. Personally, notable feature is fabric, manage, uh, fabric capabilities and memory sharing and enhanced coherency. And there is other thing update. It is, it is uh, twice speed than 2.0. But it just comes from PCI Express 6.0 specification. And multi-level switching is supported. It allowing CXL switch hierarchies. And direct memory access for peer-to-peer -peer is supported by 3.0 and etc. But today, I'll talk about the three features which are notable, I think. The first one is fabric capability. Uh, fabric connection is supported. The topology of connection was a uh, tree structure whose root was one root port until 2.0. Even dynamic binding is available. Tree structure is same with PCI Express. CXL 3.0 allows fabric connection via CXL switch like the right figure. The number of maximum nodes is uh, 4,069, actually, uh, 1996. <laughs> it can connect CXL devices with the shortest distance between servers. This is the most notable new feature for me. It will be the basis of the next generation of distributed computing. Port-based routing is introduced for this uh, capability. Messages in the fabric are sent with the port IDs of source and destination. Each ID is 12-bit for uh, 4,096 nodes. If a switch, CXL switch support port-based routing, it's called PBR switch. And a fabric manager needs to distribute IDs to PBR switch via management network. What is management network is, it can be SM bus, I2C, I3C, or Ethernet. All of them is OK. The next feature is enhanced coherency. Uh, CXL 3.0 allows that the, a device can have co cache coherency information. In CXL 2.0, only CPU needs to maintain it devices need to ask CPUs to access its memory beforehand. In other words, six CPUs and CXL devices have asymmetric relationship for cache coherency. In CXL 3.0, the relationship between CPUs and devices is symmetric. The DCOH of device watches cache coherency information on CXL. In addition, the device can request CPUs to update their cache information if necessary. For this purpose, back invalidation SNP BISNP channel is added to CXMM protocol. Here is an example of uh, enhanced coherency. 
specification describes a variety of access patterns and timing between a CPU and a device. This figure is simplified example of BISNP protocol. In, at first, CPU would like to access uh, data uh, address X of data, but device needed to flash, uh, flash cache address Y and request its data. So uh, before uh, getting data, uh, data X, CPU must write the address data Y. After that, uh, device can uh, provide its, uh, its data of X. So device can actively request CPU to change cache state and transfer data depending on the device state like, like this figure. To confirm more correct sequence, please see the, this section in the spec. This is very interesting, I think. It describes various sequences and you can understand how cache is managed actually. And please check it. And finally, uh, Next one feature is memory sharing. Memory sharing between hosts is available. Each host can work together by shared memory. Public manager has a role of configuration of which memory regions to share and how to share with them. There are two ways to how to manage cache coherency. Manage host, host hardware coherency. Uh, CXL device has a future to manage cache coherency, and when a CPU requests data write to a device memory, the device needs to coordinate cache information of other host CPUs. Next one is software managed coherency. Software needs to manage cache coherency between host, host by itself. Even if the device does not have mechanism, uh, to coordinate cache coherency, this way is available. The actual mechanism by which software coordinates uh, cache information is out of the scope of the CXL specification. Uh, here is the update of CXL 3.0, its summary. Today, I'll briefly outline some of the update features. Uh, public enhancements, uh, more specification have been audited for the public feature. The first one is Global Integrated Memory. It's used for enabling remote DMA and messaging across domains via CXL fabrics. And the next one is Dynamic Routing. A message transfer can use different paths between source and destination ports dynamically. I suppose personally uh, it seems a bit similar to the IP routing of TCP IP. It is determined by congestion avoidance and traffic distribution across multiple links or link connectivity changes. And next one is security enhancement. So far, CXL has supported CXL integrity and data encryption and CXL IDE feature. In addition, CXL 3.1 also supports confidential computing. So CXL TSP is defined. TSP means uh, Trusted Execution Environment Security Protocol. It defines a mechanism for allowing VM guests to execute uh, within a trusted boundary on direct attached CXL memory. Okay, uh, next section is the status of current Linux for CXL. Summary of current status is here. Basic implementation of CX memory driver and commands has been developed. The driver can detect CX memory devices, and you can configure memory region interleave by CXL command. And the repository of CXL command is same with ND control, uh, which is the command for persistent memory. And a solution for the memory tiering issue was developed. CXL memory makes an environment which is called as memory tiering uh, due to variety of access latency. Since Redux memory management system did not consider it, new feature was developed. There are some difficult issues for CXL memory hot plug memory pool feature yet. Even CXL allows device hot plug feature as a hardware specification, 
Linux has some issues for CXL memory hot plug. Today, I'll talk about the latter two topics. The first one is memory tiering. CXL memory has a difference of access latency compared to DDR memory. CXL persistent memory will be slower than CXL DRAM memory. And access over CXL switch is slower than direct accessing. As a result, memory access latency becomes tearing. The nearest DRAM from CPU, and DRAM on another, si another node, CXL DRAM and CXL PMU, and CXL DRAM uh, over CXL switch. For this problem, uh, CXL memory, re memory region is treated as a CPU-less NUMA node. Since Redux NUMA implementation uh, considers for difference of memory latency, it's also suitable for CXL memory. Uh, there is no CPUs in the CX, CXL memory device, so the NUMA node of CXL memory becomes CPU-less. In past, Linux memory management system did not have enough consideration for CPU-less NUMA node. Current Linux NUMA balancing policy is to use nearest memory from CPUs. It allocates memory on the same node with the CPU which process execute if possible. If auto NUMA balancing is on, contents of memory area on a far node are moved to node where the process is running. Since a CXL memory node does not have CPUs, process cannot execute on the CXL memory node. As a result, CXL memory may not be utilized as expected even if NUMA balancing is used. So Intel developed a new feature to solve this problem. Its name is Demotion and Promotion. Instead of swap out and swap in, kernel migrates cold page to CPU-less node, its demotion, and it migrates hot page to nearest NUMA node from CPUs, its promotion. So far, when a page is swapped out, CPUs cannot access its data until swap in. However, even if a page is demoted, CPUs can still access it, its difference of uh, swap out. Kernel decides which pages should be demoted in the page reclaim procedure. When a page is accessed by a threshold time, kernel promotes it. The default threshold is one second, but the kernel automatically adjusts it based on the amount of promotion candidates and its boundaries. This first work was comp completed in kernel 6.1 once. In addition, the community continues to enhance the algorithms for selecting the demotion target. So far, uh, kernel has only used all specifications, which provides only ratios against the nearest memory latency. Since ACPI HMAT can provide detailed performance data, uh, they are developed to use it. And CXL has also more uh, effective uh, performance information uh, by uh, CDAT, it may be used for I it in the future. Okay, uh, next is issue of memory hot plug, memory pool. CXL memory hot remove, memory pool has three big issues. The first one is more software components are necessary for memory pool. And next one is the CXL specification itself causes difficulty in hot removing a CXL memory de device. Not only specification, but there are many obstacles for main, uh, memory hot remove in Linux. Unfortunately, I have not enough time to talk all of them today. So I'll talk about the last issue. What is the obstacle for memory hot remove? Uh, please check the appendix of my presentation about the other issues. Uh, you can, uh, I'll update after this uh, presentation. I, uh, my presentation will be update, uh, uploaded to speaker deck. And uh, also, uh, scale.org has already my, uh, ha, it already has my presentation. And you can see it. In addition, 
I'd like to recommend that you read my discussion at the community mailing list if you have more concern about these issues. To talk about the problem, I need to introduce how memory migration works. To remove memory dynamically, contents of removing memory must be migrated to another place. Kernel moves the contents of migration from removing memory to another memory without changing virtual address. This is memory migration. Basically, uh, this can work for user process memory, but it, can, it cannot work for memory used by the kernel or drivers because its virtual address must be changed when the physical address is changed. Unfortunately, even if the memory is used by the user process, there are cases uh, that memory migrate cannot work. You cannot hot remove such area. So long term pin pages are one of the big obstacles of memory migration. Early in the future, like InfiniBand, pins pages of users processing to transfer data from the pages without mediation by kernel. Kernel cannot migrate pinned pages because they may be under data transfer by the device. I guess the DPDK or any fast performance devices features may have the same problems. And such kind of feature will increase. And VM guest also tends to pin pages to skip kernel or hypervisor, hypervisor for performance improvement. I think there is an ambivalent requirement like the following. Uh, there are many things which want to pin pages and skip, to uh, skip kernel to make better performance. But kernel has the responsibility of any resources management in OS and memory hot plug is one of them. The difficulty of improving CPU performance causes increasing the left side the requirements. Though kernel needs to manage total balance of the system, it cannot be achieved by bypassing it. So I believe the root cause is lack of communication between such feature and Linux kernel. Current solution of Linux is here. Before pinning memory, the memory areas on removable memory, the kernel migrates contents of the areas uh, to unmovable memory like DDR memory. The current kernel can create zone movable areas uh, based on user's configuration. Zone movable was created to ensure that removable memory is not used by the kernel and drivers. Therefore, it's beneficial for the 6 memory pool to allow hot remove. To con configure zone, hot, uh, zone movable, uh, please refer the uh, kernel documentation in the source code. If a for long term flag is specified for the area, the data transfer target, the Linux kernel migrates them for zone mobile to another suitable place before pinning pages and data transfer. This is a reasonable solution for now, but it may not be the final solution. If the amount of DDR memory is relatively too small compared to CSL memory, it may not be enough for pinning, pages, er, pinning areas. And VM guests also tend to pin pages of hypervisor. If a large number of VM guests are executed, six memory may be not be effective due to DDR memory shortage. So six specification provides a new approach. It's called a dynamic capacity device. It's introduced in six 3.0 specification. It allows that you can gather removable small memory blocks until required capacity rather than trying to remove stacked memory blocks. Then they can be transferred to another host. Memory pool will be available by this specification. However, I suppose it may cause other problems. A six memory device will have a mixture of following memory blocks removable memory and removable memory used by another host interleaved with other memory devices and shared by other hosts, it manages will be very difficult. In addition, in replacing of the device may be difficult. So I, I worry about it. 
So,、uh, one of my i d e a for future is here. On demand paging may, be sol-、uh, may solve this issue. ODP is a way a device can transfer data by RDMA without a pinning pages. It's communication, communicating between a device and a Linux kernel. When a kernel is going to invalidate a page for swap part or, or memory migration, it can notify the event to the driver and the device. When the device needs to access the invalidated page again, hardware asks the driver to execute a procedure like page forward and can restart the data transfer. Currently, only NVIDIA network card support it yet. However, I hope more hardware vendors will support it. To understand ODP, I recommend the following. s The m e l a n o x presentation and their paper are very helpful to understand ODP. And since we are developing an ODP support pass set for software key, you can check and try it without any special hardware. Anyway,、uh, here is the conclusion. I talked about CXL specification overview and、um, talked about the new specification of CXL 3.0 and 3.1 and current status of Linux kernel development community. I hope that many vendors、uh, will release CXL devices and boost the market. I also hope that many people will develop future drivers for CXL in Linux community. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Have you done any benchmarking with the, the current、uh, NVIDIA product yet?、Uh, currently, we don't have a、uh, benchmark.、Uh, we can provide on, in public place. Internally, we, we've、uh, estimated how, how, uh, uh, how much performance is、uh, executed in s h i x memory. Currently, it's emulation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, one more? One more? Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you for your detailed、uh, explanation.、Uh, could you go to the slide、uh, showing the new features of、uh, CX3.1? Uh, okay, uh, in this slide,、uh, CX3.1 support uh, uh, DMA and ma- messaging across domains via CX fabric. I'd like to know、uh, what、uh, domain means in this context and、uh, also the use case of this new feature.、Uh, okay, uh, in CXL specification, domains means often says、uh, it's servers. So you can understand、uh, domains means servers. So,、uh, so global in- integrated memory、uh, provides、uh, the future.、Uh, Uh, uh, servers uh, across uh, RDMA via CXL fabrics. Is it? Okay, okay. okay.、Uh, so, R- so RDMA, RDMA over a CXL fabric is a one use case. Yeah. In your okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.